the number of that when we learn and read, I think those who manage to really trip birth from mother is considered very uh, fortunate and lucky because many do not make it. And a particular section that every week when a baby is conceived in a mother's womb, every week what process going through babies. If you know more detail about that, you will be surprised, you will be amazed the life, how they form, process of borrowing all the elements and borrowing all the limbs, forming all the limbs and faculties. Each week, each week, each week, all the way to nine months, what's happening? Actually, section, it says that the, uh, you fully senses, senses, you fully senses yourself where you, um, where you feel like you're not happy here. And there is a feeling because you are trapped and you are not born yet, so you are trapped inside the mother's womb and every action happening surrounding you, whether cold water, hot water, spicy or sweet or too much food or less food, anything happening in a mother's body intensifies the pain and suffering with the baby and the baby is not outside from you but the baby is a more super sensitive where baby going through far more uh, pain and suffering than a mother is suffering. Of course the mother suffering is it's measured in uh, Bardo, Bardo, mm. intermediate bowl, that you have to, the, every mother have to go through where the border of life and death, and it could be a, a few centimeter you will be called death, or few centimeter you will be called your life. And that border, mother had to go through every time when they deliver baby. And this uh, pain and suffering that you do not want to know because it's like a metal pipe and you turn into like a jelly. You turn into a, like a very smooshy and they're pulling you from the metal pipes. And this metal pipe is not a very short one, very long one. And you have to go through all the way. And no matter how solid body you have, you have to compromise your solid body into flute. And the flute is F L U. I see fluid is a liquid, in a liquid way, so you can get out of from the, the pipe because you are inside this pipe trap, so the other side you. Anyway, that's birth process. Now, that is other reason we have to thank for mothers, what the mothers go through. Fathers have no idea. And what mothers go through, most they don't have. And mothers themselves, what they go through, most they will forget themselves after time goes on. 
it's a matter of order of life and death, but then forget. So that is unnecessary talk or extra talk and extra information for you. Sarva Mangala. Sarva Mangala. Are we at 10 o'clock yet? Th three more minutes? Oh, thank you. You letting me know that. Um in the Sutra teaching saying, be happy, show your happy face. Because when you show happy face, the person who ever see you also smiles. I was reading the, uh, the uh, history or the life story of Guru Rinpoche and Guru Rinpoche life story uh, began some section where I noticed that uh, that uh, how we make baby or reproduction. In ancient time, Buddhist Bodhisattva time, all you have to do is think and then reproduction is accomplished. And after that, then you have to see somebody and then agree each other and reproduction is done. No, still no contact. And then it boils down to that you have to smile each other. Now you got my baby. <laughs> And then it went down one step harder. You actually had to shake hand. If you did not shake hand, no conception, no conception, no conceive, baby, no conceived at all. No matter how much you try, there is no baby for you. And then one step while down to. Then they have to hugging each other, they have to roll each other, and they have to tie to each other. Just crazy. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch a snake show. Snake means S-N-A-K-E. S -N -A -K. Snake, like shh, copra, snake. So they're trangling each other. This is how they make babies. And then humans have to copy that there. And then, on the contrary, all the plants and flowers and Mother Nature, reproduction happening all the time, they have to have to have a cause and effect. And just like us, a human, and cause and effect comes, then a beautiful multiple color comes because of, of cause and effect is a multiple color. Is that beautiful? And we are productive uh, flowers ourselves. And you may not see me like flower, but there are sentient beings in the universe. Some see us a very beautiful looking. <laughs> All of us. No questions asked. Serva Mangalam. Serva Mangalam. Pode do no more humboji dog at your opinion. Good angel, the good ages on the good old Jim. What is the no more humboji dog at your opinion? Good angel, the good ages on the good old Jim. Pode do no more humboji dog at your opinion. God angel, the good 
Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Participating. I know I'm ex inspired because of you all interest in the Dharma and practice. I of a Buddhist Bodhisattva, when you and I meditate and practice the Dharma, I of Buddhist Bodhisattva are very happy because you basically say, I'm responsible for my own confusion. I'm responsible for my own mess that I met not only one lifetime, multiple lifetime, countless lifetime I met a mess. I practice my anger, I practice my ego, my, I practice my desire, I practice wanting and needing, and I always care about selfish, my own thing. I don't really uh, care about other. I did not show kindness to other. I did not show respect to other. I took advantage of everybody who are kind and compassion towards me including our mother, father, who each lifetime, they dedicate entire their life and raising us and feeding us and take care of us. And in the return, I project my parents are not good. <laughs> they are not perfect. They hurt me. They did this, they did that. Therefore, I have no compassion towards my mother, towards my parents. So, in the universe is saying, father, mother, especially mother, no one care about you more than your mother. And that mother, you, you view that is your problem, <laughs> rather than your lover who love you then you and I have major, major problem. So the Buddha and Bodhisattva Sutra is saying, if you don't love your mother, sentient beings, you don't even have an idea of love to anybody in the universe. And then, if you think you have love, affection, it's because you are bound with your attachment. It is selfish love. It's nothing to do with unconditional love. This unconditional love is exercise or not. You and I need to bring into our life and to think about that and again, again, again. Where is unconditional love is? Where is the, I, I have love and kindness, but it's bound with the attachment. And if it's attachment bound, then it's called selfish love, selfishness love. It's not unconditional love. It's not a universal love. It's not a love that Buddha talking about. So if you practice a selfish love, Buddha's Bodhisattva is no smile. If you practice the unconditional love, and every moment when you practice and meditate to take responsibility for your own karma, I need to purification. I need to help all sentient beings. Therefore, I need to be, myself need to be perfect. That way I can show other that direction. I need uh, myself experience so I can actually show that to others. This fundamental dharma energy, fundamental practice, we all need to grab them and we need to bring into actualize. We need to bring into our body, speech, mind. Otherwise, 
Otherwise, it says, uh, Outside looks like great practitioner, good person. Inside, nothing to do with goodness. Your mind. Your mind has no connection. Then he says, You appear to be a yogi, a yogini, great meditator, great practitioner. But your activities, your body, speech, your mind, every day, every moment, has nothing to do with the yogi and yogini, nothing to do with the dharma. Everything what your body, speech, your mind, that you involve with it has a samsara activity. Samsara activity means just like all living beings, what they're doing. All the living being, multiple legs, no legs, and two legs. <laughs> multiple legs, it's that some animal might have a hundred legs. And then some animal might not have any legs. And they just have to crawl, they just have to roll around. <laughs> Those kind of animal. The, the, but funny about it is a multiple leg and uh, no legs, and you and I, we are all made out of one thing. We are all made out of dirt. We are all made out of elements. When element disappears, then you and I disappear. Nothing you can hold on. And that time, your I, 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 my, my mind, my mind, my mind, my thoughts, my thoughts, that again reincarnated. And reincarnated depends on a budget. Dharma budget, what we have, based on that, reincarnate. So in a human realm, if you reach, you can probably rent an expensive hotel, motel. If you're not so rich, you'll be looking for a little cheaper one. If you don't have any money, you more likely end on the street or forest or some places where nobody bothers you. In the human realm, karma, after reincarnation, how you choose reincarnation has a lot of similar like that. What can you afford based on your merit, based on your wisdom, based on your good karma, fortune, what you have? So, everybody wants the best one. Nobody wants the worst one. But why everybody don't get it? Now, that is the message. It's not what you want, it's what can you afford. <laughs> what can you do? The law of karma cause and effect is so clear, there is no cleverness you can do it. There is no trick going on, there is no bar bargaining, there is no um, there is no cheating. There is no way you can uh, uh, trick them, anybody. The law of karma is uh, uh, so strictly, if you run into a Buddha Shakyamuni in the hell realm, you don't see Buddha Shakyamuni in the hell realm, you will see Yama. And Yama is the Lord of Death. He says, uh, I collect all souls of universe. You are just one of them. <laughs> Nothing special. <laughs> the Lord of Yama. But why you don't see Buddha instead of the Lord of Yama is because you just reincarnated in the wrong place with the wrong karma that you deal with. And animal realm, 
then you see a lot of homes and a lot of meat that uh, they have, uh, you know, animal cows, they have uh, goats, they have things on their feet. You see that. You are one of them, nothing special, but everything special and not so special, what you see is within the range of animal realm, just like four like thousand like no legs, animals. So I'm talking about all of this is uh, everybody's uh, karma determines, everybody choose, and the human realm, and a particular human realm that we have. We, every single day, we need to practice. Even you, no matter how busy you are, you can recite the mantra, you can spare five, ten minutes to sit down and meditate. Even you're in a prison. Everybody under somebody controlling. They cannot control your mind. You go in a corner inside the prisoner <coughs> jail. You can just generate in bodhicitta and understanding all sentient beings, the pain and suffering and try to equalize your pain and suffering and all living beings of pain and so as pain and suffering. You can practice a great practice inside the prisoner in a jail. Unfortunately prisoners they cannot control your mind. They can control your body, they can control your they won't let you talk. They, they can control mm, body speech, but they cannot control your mind, what are you thinking about? The person is uh, torturing you, you can think, this person is a great, 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 my mother. I deserve, I don't want him to have any bad karma. If he has any bad karma, I will be responsible. If you think, even he is uh, torturing you, he is beating you, he is killing you, he is uh, punishing you. If you project that in your mind, he will not figure out the saying, don't project on that to me. <laughs> you, can, you can project in bodhicitta, you are practicing that moment very intensive, very powerful practice are happening. Instead of fear and, and worry about the torture, none of those there because you are you involved with a great practice. Even somebody try to killing you or torturing you. So, dear Dharma brother, dear Dharma sisters, if you understand a little bit that we all need to practice. We need to team up and practice every day. Without practice, uh, knowing Dharma is uh, just a knowing recipe of food. Just you didn't cook it. You know how to do it, but you didn't cook it. No eating, no tasty food because you didn't cook it. Without practice, knowing Dharma is like that. So you can know many Dharma. I know some Dharma students that might know all kinds of deities, name, all kinds of mantra, all kinds of chanting, all kinds of uh, sadhanas, all kinds of, still they're not, they want more high level teaching. Every teaching that you received is high level, but you didn't experience any of them, therefore none of them is high level. You want a high level, then choose one and put into practice. And practice become part of your life. Practice become part of life, otherwise you're not going to ever do practice, because practice is very strange. 
uh, practice is a very um, or, or partner. Partner is, a, is something you are not familiar with. It. They said that positive and a negative are very easy to do negative. Just look at people in front of you. Can you say respectful words to anybody? Very hard to say it. You have to think twice you know, why I'm saying good words for this person. You can say negative words for anybody and no second thoughts. Because you can think negative uh, quality of that person without even saying, just looking at a glimpse of your eyes, you can, uh, you can see that person, immediately you can project interpretation, you can think negative things. It becomes second nature and no need to meditate to say that. Immediately you can say it. How you know? When you are near and dear or interact with, do you use respectful words or you use a lot of negative curse words? The lot of majority use negative words because that's all they going on their mind. So in the mind is occupied with the negative thoughts and what what word come out from you is also not so pleasant words because the mind projecting the words so we use a lot of negative words towards each other and this is become second nature in sense of beginningless time we don't use respect words and a bow and respectful words we are not used to it. Likewise, Dharma practice has become very difficult to do it. And even you do it because somebody watching it, then you do it. Because your Lama is doing practice, then you do it. And pretend in front of the Lama, you show that you are a practitioner. You don't practice when you don't see the Lama at all. You forget forever. You don't practice when nobody watching, nobody asking you to practice. That means that the practice is not part of second nature yourself. There, there is an example, going up in the stairs always takes a lot of effort because we are carrying um, many pounds, things in our body. Going up is always difficult. And going down will be always easy. They say if you put a water and a water and a water will find a place to go down, water will not try to climbing up. Water always going down, going down and down. And it is a habit that we do negative things we are so used to and as part of second nature. It is so difficult going, uh, doing good things like climbing a mountain. We make few steps and you have to take rest. Few steps, take rest because it's too hard on it. Because we're carrying uh, many pounds of our body. So you understand this, then positive and negative functionality is in our life, it's like that. Serva Mangalam. Serva Mangalam. Okay, so recite Om Muni Muni Maha Muni Soha together, everybody. Om Muni Muni Maha Muni
So the subject I would like to talk about is the Kunchu Jidi Sutra Recollection, remembering the quality of Buddha, quality of Dharma, quality of Sangha, which I started uh, two weeks ago or before, and I supposed to continue finish this. I found myself that the Sutra of Recollection, Kunju Jiri, is a so powerful practice. I try to do myself daily basis. And uh, so I want to continue to share here. And uh, it says, Kivun uh, Devakalo Jova. Buddha is the only one can tame. wild mind. There is no other can tame our mind positive, positive way, positive way. Buddha can tame our mind. Buddha is the one figure out that everything what we're thinking is wrong. We need to change that. So it says, I says, given the Kalu Jiva Lana Meba, Buddha can subdue all wild mind. Buddha can subdue all the powerful, crazy minds in the universe, including God. Demigod and Ishwa, Brahma, Indra, why they are supporting Buddha Chakyamuni is because, not because they are Buddha, because they see Buddha has a Buddha quality and they don't have. So, Buddha Chakyamuni is not only humans. God or Buddha, but also God, God of all God. Buddha Shakyamuni was not the leader of human too, like humans on planet. He was also leader of all thirty-three God realms. They all bow. They all respect the Buddha. Buddha Shakyamuni, if you think Buddha Shakyamuni, trust flowers from anywhere towards the Buddha, you accumulate merit. All beautiful flowers, universe, take that as part of offering to the Buddha, you accumulate the merit in order to benefit the countless beings. All the four continents, Mount Meru, sun, moon, beautiful ornament of sun and moon, and beautiful light, beautiful uh, Mother Earth, completely mandala, you make offering to the Buddhist Bodhisattva, ten directions, you accumulate a tremendous merit and power in your next reincarnation. So in that Buddha is a source of accumulated merit. There is no more powerful than Buddha to making offerings. So in in buying a Buddha center, buying a center or buying a, Flowers, buying Buddha statue, buying any holy object for own behalf of community group is part of package making offering to Buddha. And Buddha is the ultimate source of merit. Buddha. Sunajit. In fact, it says Sunajit that means the treasure. Treasure of uh, treasure of uh, uh, precious, treasure of merit, source of treasure of merit is a Buddha, never ends. 
made offering this lifetime, everything you own, you made offering to the Buddha. So it says that that accumulation is until you become Buddha, always you will enjoy yourself in return. The consequences, the merit. So in the third video, pages and put now your treba, pages and put now your. In the universe, we cannot find anyone compared with the Buddha. Buddha exit, exit means go beyond any existence of God, demi God, or anything you most powerful things, anything you name. So it says, Peje Sambhutna cannot find a similar example that look like this. That if you don't know Buddha, look like this. That images that we have is made out of material. For sentient beings try to figure out how they look like. But reality, there was a story that some Bodhisattva and a tender Bhumi, tender Bhumi, almost Buddha, but not quite Buddha, want to measure the size of the Buddha, could not measure it. The three realms, earth, palm realm, palmless realm, God realm, all the realms, you cannot measure Buddha because the Buddha physical body actually the tenth Bhumi Bodhisattva saw Buddha's body could not measure it in the three realm is completely blocked with the, the, the sight of the Buddha itself and could not measure it, cannot see through all of that. Tenth Bhumi almost become Buddha. So then who's going to measure Buddha? Caution is, uh, is there somebody can measure. So that is uh, here. Peje Zambut Nanjate Pasi Nanjate Buddha, when the name of the Buddha, Kautama, Buddha, Shakyamuni, there is uh, thousands and thousands of Buddha name, and there is thousands and thousands of countless, countless Buddha name. It says, uh, when you recite the uh, recite the Buddha name, you are picking a most beautiful flowers on the universe, in the universe. And Buddha name, if you hold, you have beautiful Buddha, the God, divine, divine God and uh, uh, divine, God and divine flowers that you're holding in your heart for the Buddha. Means, uh, nobody can complain behave of the Buddha. Although when in Shakyamuni Buddha emanation Nirvana Kaya, when he renounced his home and palace, there are some local people, there are some ladies and some they complaining because my husband banded me and become a bhikkhu, become a monk, and they giving up on us. It's all Buddha's fault. If I can kill him, I will no hesitate to kill the Buddha. And they want to do that. They want to uh, say negative things. But when they see the Buddha, out of this anger, they want to Buddha kill. They want to see the Buddha. When they see the Buddha, that notion, idea changes. When you see the Buddha, you see the most beautiful the flowers in the universe. Just like that, the Buddha is unique. Even some of those angry kings, and they also say, Buddha is a gem, gem like precious stone, gem that is no other universe you can find. Buddha is a rare gem. No universe other can other place we can find like that. And Buddha is a light. 
that the universal is light by Buddha, no matter how many kalpas go, the light never go away. Buddha is a light. Buddha is a flame of the light. Buddha is our hope. Buddha is a cyber. That was the kings and queens. And then the ladies were complaining because husband went to become monk. When they here interact with the Buddha, immediately they want to become done. <laughs> they don't want to fight because when they try to fight, I feel like a, they couldn't fight because they see Buddha's perspective. When they see that, they become none, and they become great practitioner themselves. So that they are. Shri Rav Sarjan Nipah, ha, very beautiful. Mipah Nipah Gavan, Mipah Nipah Gavan, Shri Rav Sarjan Nipah, Sarjan Manuva, Shri Rav Sarjan Manuva, Buddha, his wisdom, nobody defeated in the universe. His wisdom is fully sun and moon without clip. <laughs> sun and moon. And all most powerful living beings, God, demigod, and a powerful yogi, yogi means uh, practitioners, their power is like a spark of fire, spark of fire. There is there, but very little. Buddha is like the sun and moonlight. So it says, Shirap Sajimuna, nobody can ping pong. I mean, real life, Buddha Shakyamuni tried to talking about the Brahma, they were very upset because the Brahmas thought that the Buddha is too powerful, our tradition going to be jeopardized. We want, uh, we want to defeat, we want to defeat the Buddha we, so that the Brahma tradition will never go away. We sacrifice the human, but now since the human too smart, they can't sacrifice, so we can just take animals because they can defend themselves. So we can just uh, sacrifice animals. This is a tradition, Brahma had that. And also, if some important king and queen died, let's kill few people. Let's, let's kill uh, elephant, let's kill uh, cow, animal. So they, our king, our dead queen, have uh, some company. <laughs> some company. We kill as many as animals we kill. By then, the, some of these powerful kings, they kill hundreds of animals for on behalf of his uh, offering for him, so his company. So according to Buddha, if you kill somebody, how many lifetimes you have to pay the consequences? Because everybody cherishes their life. Nobody owns nobody. We try to kill others is because we are doing a force and we are using power. Nobody likes to be killed by you, no matter how good you are. <laughs> so everything is, so therefore Buddha um, is so powerful, it basically where the wisdom is on um, the wisdom. So as a Shirov Sarjimanam, Buddha wisdom, nobody Last 2,500 years, and nobody can defeat it. Of course, you can say negative things about Buddha, since you like to go hell wrong. Of course, you're welcome doing that. But really, you didn't defeat anything, because uh, you can't defeat. Uh, you have to, be a, have to have a knowledge and wisdom like a Buddha in order to defeat or in order to understand Buddha. And any Buddhas or past, present, future, they all agree that Dharmakaya, the enlightenment, is a last solution for all sentient beings. And it takes tremendous wisdom. Buddha says, a Buddha's wisdom we need. Shirov Sadyamana, Tobnala Zimba Meba. 
power of the Buddha, body, speech, or mind, everything he says, everything he do, nobody can find the fault. Top down the Zimba Meba. Sentient Tanti Jotamba. All sentient beings that the living beings, including insects, bugs, ants, all living beings in the universe bow to Buddha. Sentient Tanti. Because Buddha is your protector. Sentient Tanti Jotamba. Sentient Samba Nanti Yav. All bodhisattva, countless bodhisattva, present, future, and the past, father figure, father figure is a Buddha, Shakyamun, Buddha. Sanju Sampatamji, all bodhisattva, father is a Buddha. Sanju Sampatamji, yeah. But we can say, Nanji, Jarbo. But we can say, all great, powerful practitioners, powerful, rich people, Rich in uh, dharma, rich in uh, material, rich in uh, uh, quality or knowledge. It says, Pahvukhansanadja, uh, Buddha Shakyamuni is uh, like a king of the king. Pahvukhansanadja, Jarbu. Nyangin Deputanadja, Tungcharitan Roba, Taipun. Those who are going in the Nirvana, those who are going to Devachin, Buddha said, I lead you. You follow me. Let me show you. And eight bodhisattvas are waiting in the entrance, and they will lead you to the devachi. Sai nyungu, jampya, jampya, manjushiri, chana dorje, bajerpane, jain chan, ala loke tishor, jineze, sai nyungu, dupa number sir, nangu nyungu, nangu nyungu, oh. Akashi Garba, Nanki Nyungbo, Jitsu in Chamba, Matri of Buddha, Chamba, Kundu Zang, Samantha Bhattara Bodhisattva. They are waiting for the entrance near the door. As soon as you get the door of Devachi, they will show you how you can get in without any trouble. Actually, this is important. Moment of dying process. Moment, the time of dying process, you can actually see bodhisattvas appear in your mind, in your consciousness, even your process of separating your mind from your body. It's a bardo, you're dying, dying, dying. You are, cannot uh, move your body anymore. Or uh, what you move in your body is not very helpful. So like that happening, you appear, you see Bodhisattva. If you suppose go Devachin, then you will see the uh, the uh, your helpers arrive, Bodhisattvas arrive. If you are committed a lot of negative karma and uh, bad karma, then the uh, helpers from hell realm they are says that you belongs to us. We take you where you suppose to need to go. So you see a lot of terrified figures, and you're not dead. You're, pro you're, you're experiencing process of dying, but you can see your mind, your eyes. You feel like they are already here waiting. You see that, and then they how they lead. And I call it jokingly, but it's not joke. Expedited, either you go devajin, expedited, you go hell wrong. It all depends on what you got. <laughs> and everybody mix in between these two, then they have to stick with the 49 day bado, and then they sort out. Thank you very much. Om Mane Mane Ma Mane
their remembering their quality of Buddha and I got help to type for the translation in a copy so I would like to read the whole thing for you if you bear with me. the sutra called Do of recollection of three jewels remembering Buddha Dharma Sangha Kunjusum Sanje Chu Gendung in Tibetan word. You guys need to learn those terms in English as well as a Tibetan as well as in Sanskrit. So Buddha Dharma Sangha. I bow. Recollection, memory, remembering, remembering qualities of Buddha Dharma Sangha. In this way, the book one Buddha is a Tathagata. Buddha means Tathagata. Tathagata means one who go went beyond. Arahad, Dachyamba. He who conquered nine types of obstacles that exist in a desire realm. And a desire realm is a realm that we are now. Why they call desire wrong? Because we have a lot of desire to have this, this, this. Everything I have in front of my table, we have desire to have these things right here. <laughs> it's because it's we're wearing clothes that means desire to wear clothes. So desire, desire, desire wrong. So we are desire wrong. And in order to not reincarnate in desire realm, you have to um, uh, diminish, you have to get rid of, you have to get rid, rid of nine types of desire. If you get rid of nine types of desire, which I don't remember right now, uh, then you don't reincarnate in uh, this samsara, a uh, desire realm. You probably reincarnate in some other realm. There is a multiple countless realms available. We just only know one. There, that's where the neck of our wood, the one we know. Bhagwan Buddha is Tathagata, Arahat, completely perfect Buddha. You and I need to know complete perfect Buddha means uh, what he need to let her go, he completely he let her go. What he need to adopt, completely adopt, is called perfect Buddha. And until we become perfect Buddha, then we may have a little bit of both and a mixed. <laughs> Something like that. Complete perfect Buddha. The one with the awareness and contact the Sugata, the one who knows the world. See, Buddha know countless universe. Well, we don't know ourselves. The difference is that you know contest. We we think we know a lot, but we we believe we know a lot. What we know is not worth much. What we don't know is all the world, and we don't know that we don't know. That is a problem. So the Buddha know countless billions of universe, functionality, everything he know, and we just don't know what's going to happen this afternoon, or even tomorrow morning. That's as simple as that. So is that the the one who knows the world, W-O-R-L world, the charioteer who tames being. Buddha can tame everybody's mind, no other can tame other, other's mind. It's called the unsurpassable, the teacher of God and human. There is no comparison. 
that teacher of God and human. Humans, we have a lot of leaders, a lot of kings. God have God king. But the problem is they are not perfect. <laughs> problem is that they have faults. They have anger. They have bias. That is the reason a lot of religious believe God because they can help. Even as Nirvana Sutra said, they can help. But what they can help is temporary. What the Dharma and the Buddha can help is a permanent. Difference is, is one is a long run, one is a short term. Why the uh, powerful God can help temporarily? Because themselves is not Buddha yet. They, they are not free from six, six realms. They are bound within six realms. They, they have to go through again the six realms. They may be a God right now, they may have powerful, they may have everything, but they are not Buddha, they are not free. Their length of time is a kalpa, kalpa, kalpa. I have no clue. So many kalpas that they are they living, God realm. Because the human realm is a, like a glance. When you do water, like a little bit, they shake water with the hand, you see some water bubbles. Now, they are, for us, the water bubble doesn't last too long. And if you move your hand away, the water bubble goes away. The human realm, Eye of God realm. When they look down, the human realm duration that our existence, birth and death, old age is that water bubble. That much death. Eye of God and demigod. That was a Nirvana Sutra even saying, why you don't see Buddhism, Bodhisattva, some kalpas? Why you didn't contact with the Buddha? There's no Dharma, there's no teaching. They said, you reincarnated so quickly, you died so quickly, so your memory is so confused. And when you reincarnate, you don't see what you're supposed to see because your cycle of uh, samsara, your birth and death, old age is speeding and you can't really think anything else, you can't enjoy anything else, you can't see anything else because you are in a cycle of going round and round and round. Something like that. If I talk not too much. He is a fully adult with the aspects of passion. Buddha is a perfect example of passion. Karpa Trami, countless Kalpa, billions of times he used patience and become Buddha. He is an example of perfection of patience. And we, five minutes patient is very difficult. And when we hear your near and dear one say one word that is not so pleasant, we totally lose totally our compassion and patience. We have no patience. We have reacted so badly back to them. Bigger than what they heard you, you try to do double that. This is how we do. So that shows our patient is almost dying there. So here it says that, that uh, hmm, aspects of patient. He is the he is the basis of treasure of merit. That all the merit in the universe is fulfilled by Buddha Shakyamuni. And we need to accumulate the merit just like Buddha did. So dear Dharma brothers, sisters, from now on, be kind, be shared whatever you have in your hand. Because sooner or later, you don't own anything. Before that happened, Share with everybody, share with everybody, and merit, so you gain merit. He is adored by the excellent signs. Buddha, 32 marks, 80 manner marks of enlightenment signs. And they mention somewhere that I don't remember which text is, but the humans 
we do possess some of the marks of the Buddha, but we just don't know because we have a lot of other negative issues. Therefore, the Buddha mark, maybe you have one or two of them, but it's not really manifesting because we have a lot of other faults that we are dealing with. Then it says, the flower of his marks are in bloom. This means uh, flowers of his marks, M-A-R-K, marks, are in bloom, B-L-O-O-M, bloom, means uh, that it's a fully grown, beautiful flowers. Buddha's knowledge is, is a light, it's a beauty, it's a precious, wishful feeling jam in the universe. And the last thing, I want to stop here. Uh, last thing is a Buddha Shakyamuni manifest one million Buddha and he is serving one million universe turning the will of Dharma. And we got the last one. And it's ringing. Means I have to keep quiet. Sarva Mangalam. Sarva Mangalam. Sarva Mangalam. Sarva Mangalam. So everybody practice Dharma. If you like to walk with me, if you like to walk with me, everybody practice a little bit, including myself. Lama D. Dorje need to practice and we all practice together and talking, talking, learning, learning, knowledge has no boundary. You can learn many things, but there will be always more things to learn. And you won't make it because your life is like water bubble. And I'm sure you notice some indication that uh, they say that uh, human uh, uh, getting age is an uh, indication that says, uh, be prepared to live soon. Be prepared to live soon. So we need to practice and everybody practice. You will appreciate what I say. You will see my point and you will be very, very happy with me. If you don't practice, if you don't hear what I say, if you don't practice, then you think Lama D. Dorje is very crazy, and you are right, I am crazy, but Lama D. Dorje is crazy, doesn't really help your merit or wisdom. Sit upright. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. I see many, many. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do you have a song that you're going to do or no? If you're going to do, do it. Or else I will be disappeared. I will disappear just like everything else. I see everybody, I see everybody. Inside the wisdom is a shining. Inside the wisdom is a shining. Yeah, go here. Uh, you need to uh, use a microphone if you don't mind, so if you don't mind me saying that.
Anybody any questions? You have any questions? Go ahead. Otherwise, we are completed as far as Lama D. Dorje things. Um, okay, come here. You may need to deal with uh, this microphone so the other people might hear you. Well, I was wondering yesterday you were talking about uh, life and death. Uh, we were talking that death and life and death doesn't appear. Um, could you clarify a little bit about that? Well, if you put a specific question uh, different ways so I can talk about something, or just you only say life and death is there. Do what they, do you do they uh, i think i was trying to understand yeah little definition yesterday. when you mentioned yesterday that <clears throat> uh, about life and death and death happens but it doesn't happen actually mm. is mm. that something uh, but again we feel the life and we feel the rising and we feel the the death but if it doesn't appear how can we explain but still we experience that. Mm. How, how do we conceptualize that? Dr. Rahu, yes, your question is excellent and is everybody concerned. 
That question is uh, uh, everybody concerned, and we all need to think about that. We all need to prepare for that. So I share a little bit what I learned, but also what I actually um, think myself. And uh, it's an important question, especially if we have uh, wrinkles and a lot of white hair, then we are talking about the process of bardo is a good subject. <laughs> it is a subject we can't ignore, we can't uh, avoid. It's a subject, uh, it uh, comes up every morning. <laughs> so, uh, I know some of you are uh, laughing, that means you hear what I say, that's good. <laughs> so, uh, death and life, uh, very good question. My teeny tiny understanding is uh, life is a part of death. Because we are alive, but we are dead at the same time, and it starts with uh, when we birth. Mm -hmm. So you might not agree because the young children playing and teenage, it doesn't look like dying, but the uh, birth, death starts with the birth. If there is no birth, there is no death. If there is no death, there is no birth. So this is a death and birth that looks like a totally two different things. But if I say it's only one, <laughs> it's a one has a two sides. Or you can say it's a one but when you don't realize how you see death and birth, when you realize dharma practice, then death and birth, how you understand, are totally too different. And I want you to remember that. Good practitioner means there is no need to particularly practice for Pardo. No matter how many times you read a Pardo book, no matter how many you worry about Pardo, it's not going to help anything. All Dhamma practice is a preparation for Pardo. And any practice that is not properly is not going to help your pardo. The any practice that we do properly is for pardo. It's a beneficial for pardo. So entire lifetime practice is dedicated to the pardo, the transition process of pardo and take a new reincarnation, new life, there. So, even caution is a general and a bardo, but each one of us understanding is a different, different. So life, when we say life, as long as our mind is with our physical body. Perhaps we're talking about this is life. And when the separation of our mind from our physical body, then perhaps we are talking about the dead body and corpse. Until they're not separate, this is called life. So life, Everything we do in life for good karma, 
or for bad karma, the dream of life that we have has a lot to do with the process of pardo as well. Process of pardo is automatically revealed, automatically appear based on how we deal with the life pardo. Life pardo means after we born from mother, until we cremated in the fire, during that time, between that time, whatever happening with our body, speech, mind, activities, lot has to do with the quality of pardo. So that is the main message that we need to remember. And then, once we are pardo, once we are in a pardo, everybody experiencing different, different. Just like we experiencing different, different in a real life pardo. So the pardo or pardo also everybody different, different transition, different, different things, including new reincarnation, new birth. New birth has a lot to do with the quality of karma that we accumulated in the life part of. And that is automatically the same kind of karma that we have to deal with. Because all the karmas we created is our own um, steam, foggy, dark, steam, foggy, dark. Anything that we cannot see too clearly surrounding us is our karma, and they're not going away unless we purify them. They are clouds. The cloud can go away, but the wind blow. Our cloud of negative karma go away with the purification practice, dharma practice. So that is a pado. And a pardo has a lot of good things. Pardo, uh, in a pardo, you also have a lot of supernatural power, a lot of psychic powers. You also have a little light to yourself because in a pardo, you do not have father and mother, and you do not have a sun, sun as you and sun and moon. Sun and moonlight is no longer there. Sun and moonlight is a particularly designated, uh, designated uh, accumulation of collective karma of, uh, of that realm, particular that realm, because each realm is different. Each realm is different. So, in a Bible, you have your own light, and you can kind of like uh, understand other Pardo uh, people in a Pardo or sentient beings in a Pardo. But they have to be karnyam. Karnyam means that you have to match with the karma. Uh, uh, right now, if we have 10, 15 people sitting with me here, all of you, we have a certain, we are shared certain karma together. It's called collective karma. You and I both agree this is a room. You and I both agree this is a cushion. You and I, we all agree we are all here and we see each other. Why we can see each other, why we are sharing the same space right now, it's called sharing a collective karma. In a part though, they have to match with the collective karma, then they see each other. So they are not so lonely about it. But they also have to have a compete. <laughs> Just like uh, human lifetime, they are competing. 
you know, so as there is a, a, a moon clip or something, everybody want to go the best part. So same thing, the Inabardo, they have also competition there. And, but the good part is, the good part is that they have a light, they have little supernatural power, and they can see each other. And uh, unfortunately, they can see their, um, they can also see um, where they come from. That means that they, I don't know, it is all of them or certain quality, certain type of pardo. Uh, they see that their belonging is taken away with uh, all these strange people um, because there is a big yard sale going on. <laughs> and it says that somebody uh, dead, uh, this is yard sale. And so you go there and chase, uh, don't take this, uh, this is mine. This is, I need this, because you already playing a lot of attachment there. So uh, there, but they don't really listen to you, they don't even look at you, they don't even thank you, they're just taking it. And sometimes they pay quarters, they sometimes they say, no, no, I pay many, many more, a uh, lot of money, <laughs> but they don't want to pay more than a quarter. <laughs> they're taking your clothes, they're taking your, so that you have a lot of struggle. And then in a pardo, for Dharma practitioner, this is important that, I guess all important, but this is important, is uh, when you see your near and dear one crying, because they know you are dead. And you just tell them that you're not dead and you're talking to their air and talking, standing in front of their, they ignore you. Simply they can't see you. So what happened here is uh, you should not get upset. And when they're taking your belonging, your car, your car key, your everything, your double license, everything, anything you belong, they're taking away, you should not attach to it. And if you attach to it, then what happening is you are developing negative karma even you are in a padu. You don't have physical body as a human and you don't talk like human. You are in a padu, but really uh, you are uh, creating negative karma. And uh, because of there, you can create more karma, even a process of the padu. And uh, so, it's a pretty much a positive karma, negative karma, which takes a more part, a more bigger size. The more negative karma will take a lot of a negative experience happening during 49 days. And then, of course, uh, you eventually reincarnated. Most reincarnations are the uh, I think it's in the Nirvana Sutra mentioned that the Sutra I'm practicing with the retreat uh, mentioned that uh, you don't see father and mother much, you just see a big wall, you see big, uh, big uh, jungle, uh, forest, you go. And <laughs> you go in the forest. What happens is you conceive into a mother's womb. So the forest is your mother, mm, the wall, mountain, water. Like you go, and that's your mother. So anyway, and it all depends on the very individually how they conceived it in a mother's womb, and then when they are go through the one pardo to next pardo, they forget everything the previous pardo, future pardo you have no idea, you don't see. Previous part though, you have no recollection. Now what you deal with at that moment is only what you have. And each part though. So that is the dilemma, that is a situation we don't remember previous our reincarnation. Is that a sort of part advice talking about the part for Dr. Rahu's? I think if we want a better quality, calmly, 
genuine dharma practice, calmly, even you have five, ten minutes every day. And uh, Buddha say, don't excuse, saying, don't find excuse, saying, I have full-time work, therefore I can't do practice. You have to find a time. The time will find you to death. Remember, you better find time when you have freedom to choose yourself. So you choose time, do the practice, and don't find excuse because uh, you are full-time working. Full-time working is important because many people depend on you, saving life, doctors, and then also, even you are not doctor, you can also help others. Uh, it's called maintaining responsibility is equally as important as Dharma practice. When you take uh, serious and do it, but just don't say, don't blame them because I do so many hours work, I cannot do this, I cannot do that. That's not the uh, uh, good way to do it. You have time to sickness, you have time to um, uh, death, you have time to old age, everything. You have time to everything what you own, you might lose. Be prepared. It. So if you have those time, why don't you have time to meditate and generate bodhicitta? Practice uh, with uh, all sentient beings depend on you because they may not know as much as you do. You know, but you're not practicing. That's a problem. Knowing, but not doing practice, that's not good. One more question, sir. Okay. So, uh, from the chat, our Dharma sister Linda Sperling asked, which translation of the Sutra of Three Jewels did you use today? Uh, that is a good question. Which jewel recollection that I read, recollection of Buddha Dhamma Sangha, or remembering the wisdom, kindness, quality of Buddha Dhamma Sangha, I read this from Kagyu Monlong book. So Kagyu Monlong book is a very book, very big one. All you have to look for is a sutra recollection of three Jews. So that's my answer. Serva Mangalam. Serva Mangalam. Serva Mangalam. Serva Mangalam. And continue uh, second week, next 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 week, we t we can talk about the uh, recollection sutra because it's not finished yet. Because I try to liberate a little bit and then it's not moving too much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Those of you are moving hand, happy to see you. I see you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Mm. This morning I had no appetite for coffee, now I'm drinking. <laughs> the coconut juice make me feel strong now. Mm, so you can pack, we can leave. Yeah, yeah. Huh?